In this video, I'm going to share with you five ways in which you can stop missing photo opportunities and even set yourself up for success next time you head out. Let me first start with a few questions. Do you ever feel like you're always one step behind? Or do you ever see a great subject, but by the time you got around to being ready to take that photo, it's too late. And even if you did manage to get that photo, do you ever just feel like you've messed it up? If you've answered yes to any of them or even all of them, honestly, don't worry because we've all been there and some of us are even there today, including myself. So let's now talk about how to mitigate messing these things up and we will start with being prepared. Okay, so don't laugh, but the following things I've done many times. I've gone out with a battery at 15% or less and didn't bring a spare. I've gone out without a memory card. I've gone out without a wrist or a neck strap and was so paranoid about dropping the camera, I just didn't really use it at all. I just left it in my bag. I've had the camera in the wrong mode, such as video. So when I saw an incredible photo opportunity, went to take a picture, started to record the video. Quite a few times, I didn't bother getting the camera at my bag because I was being too arrogant and thinking to myself, well, there's nothing to shoot in this particular location why even bother only to kick myself later and last but not least yes i've done it i went to take a photo and left the lens cap on now many of you can relate some of you are sitting there laughing saying well i've never done this i thought the same until the day you do it and then you feel like a bit of a tit it's one of those things where you think it's so easy and so obvious and so simple not to you know go out with an empty battery but if you're busy if you're distracted these things can happen so always have some kind of a system or some way to make sure that these silly little things don't trip you up because usually it is the silly little things that can potentially ruin the day. Whether you shoot manual or aperture priority or shutter priority, it doesn't matter. It's very important to make sure that your camera is set up for the particular scene you're in, and more importantly, the scene that you will be going into. Let me give you a quick example of what I'm talking about, and this happens to me more often than I would like. I'll be out taking photos on a nice sunny day, F8, high shutter speed, low ISO. I then go into a slightly darker environment, but I forget to update my camera settings for that environment. A minute later, walking around to see a great subject, great photo opportunity, I quickly switch the camera on, go to take a photo, and one of the few things would happen. Either the image is like 10 stops underexposed and it's black basically and ruined, or the shutter speed had to be so low in, let's say, aperture priority, that there is a ton of motion blur, image is ruined, or the ISO was pushed up to, I don't know, the max, and again, the image is not as ruined, but is still not ideal. Then I'll kick myself, and I'll always say to myself, you should know better, you should have prepared and adjusted your camera before coming in. So the moral of the story is, you need to be a little bit more proactive, and if you sense that the lighting condition would change, maybe the cloud covers the sun and it gets a bit darker, just quickly check your camera settings, make sure that you're still set up roughly for the lighting conditions, because then if something happens and you have to quickly react to take a photo, at least you'll be in the rough parameter of those conditions and not the ones where you were shooting 10, 15 minutes ago.
Whenever someone asks me why do I like street photography, what is it specific about street photography that I find appealing? And my answer is always the same. For me, street photography forced me to just pay attention, to observe the world around me and to focus on little details within a city or to be honest, anywhere that otherwise I would completely miss and walk past. And over time, what that's meant is when I'm out and about, I could see a very interesting subject right in the distance. However, rather than just reacting and quickly taking photos, I would take a step back and think, okay, that subject is walking towards me, but his body is leaning towards the left, so maybe he will cross the road. So if he crosses the road, and maybe I can cross the road on the other side and then have a really nice background and get a fantastic photo. So by being a bit more proactive, by reading the scene, by observing, I've managed to put myself in a position where I could get the best chance for the best photo, given the environment, the subject, and the conditions. Waiting and being patient both in the short term and in the long term will pay dividends. Waiting in the short term will be familiar to you if you've watched my last video where I talked about giving yourself an extra 30 minutes or an extra five minutes or however long it is, just giving yourself a set amount of time extra before moving away if you didn't happen to get any photo. And again, over the long term, I can guarantee you that will bring you more results and it'll mean missing out on less opportunities. However, in the long term, being patient means that not getting frustrated if you didn't get the photo that you want from a particular scene or from a particular area. And being patient in the long term means if you have an image in mind, if you have a particular area, just keep coming back to it. Maybe once a week, maybe once a month, maybe once a year, it doesn't really matter. A long-term patient mindset is knowing that photography is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Finally, it doesn't really matter how well prepared you are, how proactive you are, or even how patient you are, because in many cases, you just simply won't get the photo that you were hoping for. And this is where I would actually recommend having a journal. The way I do it is using my phone. On my laptop, I will have a bunch of folders which are divided into locations, cities, countries, etc. And if I'm in a particular location, I didn't get the shot that I wanted, but the composition is good, the lighting is good, maybe there's something there which guarantees an interesting subject every now and again. I'll take a photo on my phone and then I will have that saved in those folders respectively where it belongs. Now in the short term, this might not yield any results. However, if you do this consistently over a long period of time, I'm talking maybe two, three years, you will actually build an encyclopedia of the best locations, of the best lighting conditions, and put yourself in a position where if you're visiting a particular part of town where you've been, let's say, three months ago and you didn't get anything, maybe you can just quickly have a scroll through all the photos that you took on your phone of those locations and think, actually, at 3 p.m., the light should be good at this particular spot. It's sunny today, so let's go there. Maybe you're not lucky again, but maybe you are. So by being proactive and having this, let's say, visual catalog of locations and lighting conditions and all that good stuff, you're effectively putting success back in your favor by being more prepared, thinking of the long term and being proactive. That's all from me. But before I go, I just want to ask you a question. What mistakes do you make when you're out taking photos? That means you miss photos or you mess them up and more importantly what do you do to correct those mistakes because i've only talked about five in this video i'm sure if at least a few of you share your experiences 
there'll be a lot more in the comments that other people can learn from you. So thank you again ever so much for watching the video. Thank you for your continued support on the channel and with my digital products. It does go a very long way to keep everything going. So thank you again one more time and I'll see you in the next video. Weather's a bit crap today, so I'll probably edit. No photos and I'm waffling. Bye.